Hey everyone, we're back for the final installment of the crazy matrix panel that I've been designing and building. Now, there's a couple of things I want to talk about before we put it all together. I've been playing around with different graphics libraries and matrix libraries, NeoPixel driver libraries for this panel for the ESP32. There was some suggestions in comments in the first video about an alternate library that I could use that would better support the RGBW or GRBW pixels on the ESP32 because of the timing issue that the Adafruit library has. And I played around with all the, the different libraries and options and to be honest with you, I couldn't find any that worked properly on the ESP32, which is a bummer, but I want to show you those results. So I'm going to shut the lights down just so you can see what it looks like without it blowing out too much on camera. So I've got my ESP32 plugged in still and if I plug the power in and do a, a reset. This is just running some demo code that came off one of the libraries. And you can see there's still some flickering pixels going on. It's not as bad as what I was getting from the Adafruit library, but there's still some random pixels that are the wrong color. It's an interesting library. I'm not quite sure what some of these patterns are. Some of them look like they're working properly, some of them don't. You can see there, those flickering pixels. I cannot find a library that doesn't do that on the ESP32. But I'm gonna leave that running for the moment because I guess what I wanna do first is talk about this front panel and the two different sides and, oh, look at that. And the fact that it's still bowed even though I managed to flatten it. I've done it a few times now and each time I try to flatten it, it stays flat for about an hour and then it bows back. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem. So there's two ways that I can use this. There's the front, beautiful, shiny way where the black is at the back and the grooves are cut at the back. And then obviously there's the other way around, which looks a little bit rougher. Um, you've got the matte black at the front from the spray paint. So let's start off with doing it this way and I'll show you why I'm not gonna do it this way. It looks pretty cool. I'm just gonna push it and force it down right now and force it down flat. So. Obviously on camera it's kind of highlighting the, the dots a lot. The dots aren't as evident in real life. Still, it looks pretty good. But what you might notice with this way around is that there's a lot of light bleed between the different cells. And the reason there's a lot of light bleed between the different cells is because, because I scanned in and etched inside into this face here. What it's done is on the inside it's left transparent walls inside each cavity and like acrylic does when you edge light acrylic the light's coming in and it's edge lighting and it's spreading light across to the neighboring panels so if i put it this way which is the other way around what you get is a nicer looking dot still a little bit hot from the camera but very little spill if you notice that still a little bit of spill but nowhere near as much spill so this is the direction I'm going to place it on. Pretty about those flickering dots. Super frustrating. I have a solution for this though. I'm going to not use an ESP32. I'm going to use a Wemos D1 Mini and that should solve all of my problems. It's a pretty cool demo. Okay, let's get to it. So I'm going to unplug this. See you later, ESP32. Okay, so I've got my panel. Let's just zoom out a bit. I've got my front plate. I've got the matrix that sits over the top. I've got a back plate for the back so I can cover up these wires. I'm not doing anything about the mounting right now of the uh, microcontroller. I'm just going to put the back on and I've got some screws and nuts and I need my lights. Let there be lights. And we have our light back. Awesome. So let's start putting this together. I'm expecting some resistance because of the, the warping. I'm expecting I'll have some problems trying to get the screws in and hopefully I will not crack the acrylic because the holes are fairly close to the edge. That's gonna go like that, and that's gonna go like that, because I'm gonna to have to push this down and bow it as it's happening, and this might end badly. Folks, I'm gonna do one end at a time. You can see how much bow there is. It's pretty bad. I've really never experienced this before. I'm not gonna do it tight yet either. I'm gonna, I need a bit of give. So one side I assume is gonna be fine, but getting the second side in is gonna be a problem. Hopefully I won't crack it. Okay, I mean you can see the bow, right? Wish me luck. What I might have to do is actually manually screw it. 
Oh, okay. If I keep them separated, maybe, maybe it'll work. Maybe. Okay. Not too bad. Oh, what am I doing? I need to put the back on. At least the screws are in. And the tension of the acrylic is going to keep the screws in place. Okay, I'm going to use the matte side on the back. Just to cover up the wires. Oh, come on. Again, it's not perfect. <laughs> wow. I don't even know if my screws are going to be long enough to do this because of the bowing. At least it's going to be wide enough now to actually stand by itself, I think. Need to see whether these cables fit. I hope they do. I didn't really check first. Yeah, they do. Okay. It's just the same cut that I used that I wired the RGB LEDs onto. So I left the same slots. It was just easier. It was already there. I didn't have to worry about redesigning a new piece. Come on. Come on, get in. Do it, do it. Thank you. Love it when a plan comes together. Except I can't screw. <laughs> okay, almost there. Almost there. So, I've been working on some demo code on the ESP8266, on the D1 Mini. The reason I want to use a, a A266 or an ESP32 is because I wouldn't mind having this panel be internet. So they're pretty much my two options right now. That's how it looks. I might just push these wires down a bit. It doesn't really matter. It's on the bottom anyway. Um, as I said, it's a bit of bowing. I mean, I could have remade the whole case and put some extra screw points in the top, but this is okay. It sits. It's pretty sturdy, actually. Let's uh, see what it looks like. So I'm going to plug my D1 Mini in that has some demo code on it, although I haven't seen it put all together yet, which will be exciting. I'm going to just wire these up. I can't remember what pin I used. <laughs> How long is that? Okay. I want 5 volts. Now, yes, I'm running this panel off the 5 volts off here, and I'm using the 3.3 volt logic to drive it. And I think it's going to be fine. I think it's D2. I think I put on D2. I hope I put on D2. And I need ground. Now, obviously, I can use a level shifter on this once I do something more with it. And uh, ultimately, I should be powering it off something other than the USB. But I think we're going to be fine if I keep the brightness down. Okay, so the reveal. I've got two little demos on here that I did. They're really nothing fancy. I'll turn the lights off first again. I mean, it's not super dark in here. I've got my window open, but it's dark enough that we can see what it looks like. So I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to plug it in and see how we go. One, two, three. Oh, look at that. Now it should cycle in a moment. Here we go. <laughs> wow, that's a bit uh, bright. Let me see if I can darken this down a bit. See if I can take off some of the glare. Maybe you'll be able to read what I put there. Nice work, Sion. <laughs> How cool. So that is my panel. It looks pretty good. I mean, again, it looks different in real life than it does on camera. Camera's showing the hot spots inside much brighter, like more of a white than a solid color. But there you go. And look at the nice light spill. So this is running only at 35% brightness. So you can imagine how bright it is in real life. If this is what it's showing on the camera and I have to turn the camera brightness down. So what did I want to use the 125 by 7 for? I mentioned in my first video and maybe even the second video that there was a purpose for this particular panel size. And it, although it wasn't specific for this panel, but I wanted to reproduce that size in this project just as a proof of concept before I go ahead and make my other custom PCBs that are going to use smaller pixels and it's going to be, end up being a much smaller display, but still using the 125 by 7. So let's have a look at some different code and it might give away what I'm going to do with these because I want to make two of them. Okay, let me just uh, unplug this. Yes, it's a clock. It's not 12.04. Okay, what I'm about to show you is just a like a hacked demo. It's not <laughs> even 
close to being finished or anything else, but it will give you a really good idea of what this is going to be. Yes, I want to build a custom clock slash alarm clock, but more than that, it's going to be something that's specifically designed for my kids, because both of my kids are on the spectrum, both of my kids have ADHD, and they're all about routine, and they're all about being prepared for things. Uh, kids on the spectrum don't like surprises. They like to know what's happening ahead of time. They like to be given warning. They like to be given a countdown for things to happen. Either they've got this much time left to do something, or they have this much more time before something's going to happen. And so the idea with this, not this particular display, but a smaller version of this with uh, smaller pixels, but in this format, it's going to be a clock that's going to have their complete schedule in it. It's going to have sound. Um, I'm thinking of adding MP3 sound to it as well. And what it's going to basically do is, for instance, at a certain time in the morning, it's going to, the sun will rise, there'll be some chirping sounds, and it'll start a process of like a wake up alarm clock, it'll let Ollie know that she's got 10 minutes worth of sleep in time until she actually has to get out of bed. And then at the five minute mark, it'll beep and let her know she's got five minutes left before she needs to get out of bed. And then at the one minute mark, it'll say, here we go, let's get up, let's just start getting moving. It'll let her know what her schedule is for the day. This is what she needs to get dressed into, if it's a school day or if it's the weekend or just a, a school holiday. This is what the program is for the day, and it'll basically give her the information she needs in the morning to get moving. I don't know if it's going to work. It sounds like a good idea. I think, you know, Yaz and I have discussed it, and we both think it's worth trying. I can definitely do them with a screen like this, just with some general microcontrollers plugged in the back. But these are quite awkward to make, as I've shown in these set of videos. And I'd like something that was uh, smaller. It takes up a lot of space. I don't want something that's going to blind the kids. And also at night time, you know, it'll do the whole moon comes up and the twinkling stars and it'll say good night Flynn or good night Ollie and it'll go into clock mode, it'll go really dull and it'll definitely have some form of ambient light sensor to be able to dull down at night time. But anyway, yes it's going to be a clock and as you can see here it's 7 by 5 digits with the extra space in the middle for the colon, that's why it's 125 by 7. I get a full character set at that font size. It's nice and big and easy to read. That's what the screen's all about, for me anyway. But this project was about seeing if I could build a really cool looking matrix panel that was different from the usual 16x16 16 16, and using a laser cut acrylic front face rather than building all the individual crossed sections and trying to glue it all together and using the regular white front piece. And I think it's come out pretty well. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Hope you'll agree that it looks pretty good. Can't say I want to make another one, but I'm glad I made one. Okay, folks, that's it. Thank you for watching. Thanks to all of my subscribers. If you're new here and you haven't subbed, please click the subscribe button. Please click the alarm button to be notified when there's new videos being released. Don't forget to follow me on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook. To all my patrons, you are just awesome. Thank you for all of your support and generosity. And until next time, I will catch you all later. Bye.